So this is how I do a darts, the anaconda. This is the difference. This is going on all fours. So a darts goes from wrist, armpit to the neck. And anaconda goes from your wrist, from the head to the other side. So we're gonna start with the darts first. You come through. here and you knock them over and the way you know if you have a darts is if you'll be able to wave out saying hi you grab your bicep and usually what most people tend to do is they they, they put their their hand right here you want your hand as close as you possibly can you see he's already moving and then if you can put yourself into a half guard or even here and turn his head to the ceiling he's tapping now the Anaconda and the darts looks the same, but their the mechanics is different. So with the anaconda, you do the same grip and you turn. Now watch this. I can choke him all day. He might tap, but I have to bring my hips off the mat and walk. I'm using my chest to choke him. All right, let's get to some troubleshooting. In a perfect world, what I demonstrated will work, but let's talk about a resisting opponent. So let's watch my right arm. You're gonna see me go from the armpit to the neck. That is the hallmark of a darts choke. Everything I explained previously, I do it right here in the video. Now, of course, I did show how to get the darts from a turtle and finishing it from a side control. But in my opinion, the best time to really attack it and practice is when you're inside of someone's half guard. So let's break this down. You're going to see my arm go from the armpit through to the neck and watch how I'm waiting to see if my hand waves out. The moment my hand waves out, you're going to see that I'm going to grab from my bicep and I'm going to take my non-choking left hand and I'm going to drag it as far as I can close to his shoulder. The moment I have that, I go straight on my hip and then I tangle them up. Once you have the person tangled up, that's when you start trying to make their head turn to the ceiling. Sometimes you're going to feel like you don't have it and it may take a while, but just sit there and chill just like how I'm doing here. And then eventually you're going to see the person tap. With the Dars Choke, in my opinion, you have to be very, very annoying. I would say, imagine your Dars Choke is like a fly. No matter how many times you swat that damn fly away, it just keeps coming back to your head. When you're relentless with the darts choke, you will physically see that you're gassing out your opponent. But there is a key detail that I didn't explain and I'm gonna explain it here. When going against a resisting opponent, you see my left hand keeps trying to go from armpit to neck, but the guy is stopping me. So I have to take my right hand and I have to put my tricep behind his head. And I'm really using my right side of my body, my lats to squeeze him in. And then you see the moment I see my hand out, that is when I grab the bicep and go on my side. When the head is captured, there is always a period where you have to chase after their legs to tangle them up. Don't worry, be patient, turn their head to the ceiling, and there you go. Now let's talk about this anaconda choke. From the untrained eye, the grip looks similar to a dars, but then you see me roll and then I bring my hips off the mat. Now in the demonstration, Jay taps a bit early when I walk towards him, but in reality what's gonna happen is people are gonna run away from you. Of course, this is not an anaconda choke, but it will look something similar where you guys are running in a circle. But as long as your hips is off of the mat, you can still submit them. You don't have to wrap their legs up. The only person that has truly countered my mechanics is the person that showed me how to do the choke in the first place, which is my coach right here. But even though my coach knew the defense and I didn't know the counter to his defense, this was the closest I've ever gotten to submitting him. And by no means I am bragging. What I'm saying is if these mechanics put black belts in danger, imagine when you catch someone else that doesn't know how to defend themselves very quickly. Just keep in mind that you're choking with your chest, not your arms or wrists like the Dars. So let's break it down. Your wrist goes from their neck through their armpit and you grab your bicep. Afterwards, you do something called an Olympic roll and you raise your hips in the air. Keep in mind that you are choking with your chest. That's why your hips are in the air and you're walking towards them. If you ever get lazy with your hips and drop your hips as you're walking towards them, the submission will fail. 
So, like I said before, neck through armpit, grab your bicep, Olympic row. Now, I want to show you guys something. I'm going to show some competition footage. I discovered you really don't have to do the Olympic row. I personally like it because it makes your opponent panic. But remember, the choke is with your chest. So when I went from his neck through to the armpit and I grabbed the bicep, I noticed that his head was already perfectly placed under my chest. So I went straight directly to my hips and I was able to actually kind of tangle him up like as if it was a darce. I'm grouping anacondas and darces because when you develop a legitimate anaconda and darce choke, you can then fake them out and go to the back and do your rear naked chokes. The hand fighting techniques and squeeze you develop from those two gives you a nasty rear naked choke. So let's say you're at a competition and you snap the person down in that turtle position. Because you always go for anacondas and darces, this person's going to feel that pressure and then you could just fake them out and go to the back. Anacondas and darces are a part of the guillotine family. So you got to learn high elbow, low elbow, and arm and guillotines. But to me, it's crucial to learn those two together because you develop a squeeze that will put people to sleep. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope this wasn't too long. Take care.